This video is sponsored by Simply Safe. Get the loud all seasons. Welcome back. I'm Tedward, and welcome back to my 2022 Honda Civic Si, my new daily driver that I traded in my E92 M3 for. Now that might sound like an insane thing to do, but when you have 110,000 miles on your German 8400 RPM V8 Monster that you're doing 14, 15,000 miles a year in it can get really expensive and time consuming because you're constantly having to repair the thing and whether you're doing it yourself or sending it to a shop, you're losing that time with the car. And because I already have an E39 M5 and an air-cooled 911, plus my job is literally driving fun cars, I thought, you know what, maybe it's time to get a daily driver that's more suitable to economical and practical needs. But the reason I bought this car was because I wanted a reliable daily driver that wouldn't bore me to tears. So today I wanna to talk about what it's been like. I've put 2,200 miles on this car already, and I actually don't know anyone else personally who owns one of these. So if you're in the market for a car like this, or you're cross shopping it against other cars, I wanna help you understand what this is like to use and own every single day. So some basic facts. It has a one and a half liter turbo four cylinder that makes about 200 horsepower power. It's only available in a six-speed manual transmission. And for the U.S. market, this does not have very many luxuries. In Canada, you get a heated steering wheel, heated seats, heated rear seats, fog lights. In the U.S., you get none of that because Acura's Integra that's coming out is going to take care of the luxury segment of this chassis, of this platform. So if those things are genuinely important to you, this is already probably a deal breaker. And if this six-speed manual is something that you do or do not want that might make the decision for you as well now we're going to talk about dailying a manual today as well because for some people this is like how they stake their personhood their manhood their masculinity their integrity is based on the fact that they only drive manual transmissions i do not understand that i've been driving manual transmissions my whole life my e92 m3 in fact was my first automatic transmission as a dct and I, 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 didn't, uh, I didn't change as a human being. It was fine, but I do prefer driving a manual, but it's not great in every condition. So we'll get into that too. But this is a Honda Civic. This is the entry level economy car. This is not some fancy thing. And it's gotta be weird going from a kind of top tier BMW to a Honda Civic. That's what I wanna talk about today because in 2022, even normal cars, even like normal boring cars are pretty damn good. I mean, listen to this, even the door close. Like things like this were not the case in the 90s, in the early 2000s. You were driving a Civic in those times, you were getting a rat trap. So let's start it up and see what this thing is like to own. But first, today's video is sponsored by Simply Safe Home Security System. We all have security systems on our vehicles. We've got an alarm system, motion detectors, wheel locks, dash cams. But what about your home? Are you protecting the place that you live or just your vehicle? Simply Safe is the easiest way to protect your home, and the setup is incredibly simple. The Simply Safe system is wireless, making it incredibly easy to pair each individual device. And the Simply Safe app allows you to monitor the entire system, including the doorbell camera and and the indoor camera. But the best part is you don't need to monitor anything. When the doorbell camera senses motion or a doorbell ring, it will alert your phone so you know that there's somebody at the door that you need to be keeping an eye on. And with a live view of the indoor camera you place anywhere in your home, you can monitor your house for unwanted visitors or just watch your dog while you're away. But Simply Safe can be used for more than just home security and worrying about break-ins. If you're like me, you're hoping that the house doesn't flood or burn to the ground while you're away and you always want to turn back and check. I've placed the water sensor under my washing machine to make sure that my house doesn't flood while I have the laundry running and I'm not home. Save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for the interactive monitoring plan and get your first month free. Visit simplysafe.com slash Tedward to learn more. Before we start driving, I want to show you the windshield washer fluid. This is oddly satisfying to me. Look at this. It comes out right above the wiper and it only sprays on the upstroke and then it like perfectly coats the windscreen without just spraying it all over the place. It's bizarrely efficient and I don't know why I find this so incredibly charming and cool. First up, 
Let's talk about this manual transmission. Should you be daily driving a car with a manual transmission? This is not for everyone. And I'm not gonna judge you if you do or do not. It really depends on your driving situation, your driving skill level, your tolerance for, for mechanical things. I'm somebody with a lot of mechanical sympathy. I'm somebody who really enjoys, ah, let's go this way. I'm somebody who really enjoys driving and I like, oh, see, auto start stop. We can talk about that as well. I like hitting this button. I don't really dig having auto start stop. We're gonna give this guy a second because we only have 200 horsepower. We are not able to make the craziest moves in the world. But it does get out of the hole fast enough you know it takes a second for that turbo to spool up but once you're off you're off so manual transmission if you're somebody who has like no mechanical sympathy or no mechanical tolerance like you just want to like get in and drive you don't want to have to think about anything this is just never going to be the option for you I, I mean luckily you live in a world now where you can get either cbt's automatic you know normal torque converter transmissions or a dual clutch and that's a beautiful thing for a lot of people and a lot of applications and even i prefer a dual clutch and a lot of applications for example i bought my e92 m3 with a dual clutch transmission over the manual six speed that's the first time i had ever owned anything like that and frankly i thought the dct suited the car better you know it's like i see comments all the time on my videos where i'll be driving a gt500 right 760 horsepower mustang and 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 the comments are like well it has a dual clutch so i'm not even going to watch this video that's stupid like manuals only but like it does suit the car pretty well same goes for a gt3 rs now this is not a GT3 RS. We're talking about a Honda Civic. So what's the benefit of having a manual six-speed in a car like this? Straight up, it's because it's more fun. This is not the most exciting car, okay? We have a one and a half liter four-cylinder with a little baby turbo, okay? We're here for efficiency and a little bit of torque. But I gotta say, if I wasn't rowing my own gears in this car, I think I would get bored very quickly. I've driven the CVT 11th Gen Civic, uh, obviously, not an SI. It, it was fine. I was very impressed with the chassis, but I'll be honest, I was not genuinely impressed with, let's see, you are turning, right? Good. Okay. I was not genuinely having fun driving the car because it was a little boring not having this extra engagement. And the beautiful thing about this Honda is that this gearbox is actually really good. Like, I like driving it. I want to drive this. I think about driving this car because this is a fun gearbox. It's like the world's cutest rev limiter. Now for me, I prefer having a manual even over a DCT in a daily driven application because frankly, I got really annoyed with the DCT in my M3. In traffic, I would rather operate a clutch myself, frankly. I would much rather operate a clutch myself than have to like game the system. You know, every PDK, DCT, DSG, whatever you're using, those dual clutch transmissions, like you're gaming the system. You're trying to adapt to how the computer is going to react to you. Simultaneously, the computer is adapting to your driving style it's like a mess. And so when you're in that bumper to bumper traffic, it's like you're trying not to constantly engage and disengage that clutch because you don't wanna wear it too much. And it's very frustrating. Whereas like with a manual transmission, I know that I can kind of be like, okay, cool. We're gonna give it a little bit. We'll clutch in, coast a second, get in a second, clutch it. Like all these things, like I can have more mechanical sympathy and I can drive smoother, frankly, myself in, in, in traffic in a manual gearbox and that's very frustrating to me. I mean, everything's pretty much going to a ZF8 speed at this point anyway, so torque converters are coming back in a big way. Even the M5 is a torque converter automatic and the M3 now too. Rev hang. Okay, so a lot of questions and comments and complaints about rev hang in this car. Should I tune it out? Well, the thing is when you tune out rev hang, you're probably voiding your warranty, right? You're gonna be tuning. I mean, that's I'm not actually completely positive about that, but one would assume that if you're gonna tune this car, you may be voiding a warranty. And I'll tell you what, I would much rather have a warranty than eliminate the rev hang. 
So for now, the rev hang stays, I will live with it. And this is another big reason why buy the Civic Si when there's like the Elantra N or these other competitors that are a little nicer or a little faster for a little more money. The reason I bought this Honda is because it literally was the cheapest and it had the most for the compromise. I think we're under $30,000 here. So I get it, if your dealer is marking you up five grand, like that this stops making sense. And I agree, I 100% agree this does not make sense if they're marking it up $5,000. But if you can get it at MSRP, you're getting a pretty sweet deal. And one of the reasons I did not go with the Hyundai is because frankly, I have never shopped in my life for a used Hyundai. I have never gone on Craigslist and thought, I'm gonna go hunt down of a Loster N, okay? They seem to come and go, they fizzle out. It's a weird thing. And maybe, maybe that Elantra N is a phenomenal car. Maybe it's gonna be great. Maybe this DCT Elantra N is just the ticket and it's gonna be like, the most efficient, cheap, hot little sedan you can get for the money. But the problem with me is, A, I'm not like a huge Hyundai fan. B, I don't know enough about them. I've only ever really heard about them when people are complaining about reliability or like needing an engine replacement or something. So to me, that doesn't really say much. And then, you know, like I said, I know that like I've never thought, you know what I'd really like is a used Hyundai. So I wanna be able to sell my car someday, you know? I want to be able to get rid of it confidently and not think like, man, I just took a bath on a Hyundai because I thought it was gonna be the most efficient way. So what about the fact that it's not incredibly special? It's not an M car, it's not an Audi RS, it's not all these things. Well, what I've realized, and if you look around at all the rich people you know, all the people that like own the Huracan or the 458 or the Aventador, Go look at what they're daily driving. Most of these people aren't really driving the Urus or the Bentayga. A lot of them are driving like a Jeep Grand Cherokee or a Tesla Model S or a Model 3. Dr. M3 daily drives a Tesla Model Y, okay? He does not daily drive his Aventadors. He has a Lamborghini collection, drives a Tesla every single day, right? Like, he's not gonna go put those miles on those cars. He's also, most rich people, most people with these types of cars have some level of like business savvy and they recognize that stacking miles on expensive cars is expensive. They're not rich for no reason. They're usually wealthy because they understand how to balance and handle their money. So for me, I was like, why am I always like saying, oh, don't drive anything boring. And I don't think this is boring, but why should I be driving a car that's costing me thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars every year in both consumables, fuel, maintenance, broken things, all this stuff, when I could go do the majority of my boring driving. And when I say boring driving, I mean like home to work. And when I say work, I mean like going to Bond Group or Boston Motorsports, you know, that is a bit of a slog. That's that's an hour of my day each way about. So why should I be stacking miles on, a, on an M3 that's getting 22 miles per gallon at best when I could drive a somewhat normal car that's safe, fun, and efficient and save a ton of money. Okay, so let's talk about efficiency for a second. First of all, fuel wise, this thing is insane. And if I was only thinking about fuel, this wouldn't have been the car to get because I get 38 to 40 miles per gallon in this car. It's rated at 37 the way I've been driving it. I'm managing to get a little more. If I was only thinking about fuel, I probably would have either bought an electric car or a plug-in hybrid. But I thought, you know what? I'm willing to sacrifice a little bit of that fuel economy for the fun. And I know that sounds a little crazy, like, wow, oh, you're only getting 40 miles per gallon. But like, that's the deal, right? You have to make those choices. And I, what, when I could get more fuel economy out of those plug-in hybrids, they wouldn't be as fun. They just frankly would not entertain me and I would be bored to tears and I would regret that purchase for me. And as far as maintenance and consumables go, when you do an oil change in this car, it takes 3.7 liters or quarts, I forget. Either way, three and a half or 3.7, one or the other. Less than four quarts, less than four liters. My M3 took 8.8 .8 liters every oil change. That is a lot of oil and it was expensive oil because it was 10W60. So you're spending a lot of money on that. That is not cheap. That is frustrating and I'll tell you what, if you've ever had like an oil change driveway mess, 
it's a lot nicer to have a driveway mess with about four liters versus nine. <laughs> that is not pretty. But also consumables on your daily driver. When we're talking about brakes, we're talking about tires. I don't necessarily wanna be buying expensive consumables just to get to work and back. So on fuel alone, in 2,000 miles, I have saved $198, okay? $198 in fuel alone on this car. That's not nothing. So every 2,000 miles, I'm gonna save $200 in fuel. That's $200 that I'm not spending. And I put 2,000 miles on this car in the first month, okay? so. If I could tell you you could save $200 a month, you'd probably say like, yeah, that's great. If I tell you it's because of fuel economy, like don't get all macho on me and be like, well, I don't care, I'll sacrifice it. Well, okay, but like it's 200 bucks. Not to mention that this is about a 12 and a half gallon tank and when I fill it, my range is essentially 450 miles. That's bonkers, that's like diesel Volkswagen levels of range, that's pretty That's pretty great. And I love that I, I not only spend less at the fuel pump, I go there less often because I actually have a lot more range than I did in my daily driver BMW M3. I most never use sport mode in this car because I think it's kind of silly. It doesn't really do anything. But for the sake of the video, let's go to sport mode. You get the fake noises. Get the loud all seasons. Get this great differential that once we're like trying to claw our way out of a corner, we can stay in that throttle. It's really incredible. Like I have so much fun driving this car. And and that's the thing. Like you can have fun in sort of a normal car now because this chassis is so rigid and entertaining. And like this is a a fun gearbox to drive. So do I feel like I'm missing out coming from my E92 M3? In terms of sheer speed, absolutely. Like that, you know, this is 200 horsepower. This is not a fast vehicle by, by my standards, by most people's standards. But the thing is like, you can genuinely enjoy driving it. And you know, we get into a little bit, play with these brakes, chuck her in, wide open throttle like that is not not entertaining I'm having fun and I feel like I'm able to kind of use all of the car more often than I would in my M3 all right so we bump up into some highway driving this is where I spend most of my life all right and this is where like this car can fall short a lot of a little bit. So if you're somebody who has like a lot of consternation about road noise and comfort, sure, a Mark 8 GTI is going to be a better vehicle for you. Go get the Audi A3, go get something like that. For me, I was kind of like, you know what? My M3 wasn't exactly quiet. It was pretty stiff, it was pretty loud, and this is not a big step down in terms of that sort of road noise. So I'm fine with that. And I've gotta say, the sound system in this car, the Bose sound system is very nice. I enjoy this a lot. Now, that might be because I've always owned like 10 year old cars. So the speakers that I own are always like burned out and destroyed. So I never really get a good sound system even when I'm buying a somewhat new car to me. But the biggest test I've always found is if you can play Billie Eilish bad guy and the, the car is not rattling itself apart, then you're in good shape. It rattles a bit to bad guy. You can listen to bad guy. I don't need to listen to bad guy, it's fine. It's just like that to me, that has so much ridiculous bass that <laughs> I think it's the test. So here's the thing, if this is your only car, I do think this can serve a great purpose, but if you're like a big car enthusiast and you wanna be able to go to Cars and Coffee and have something a little special, I understand that this might not be it for you. I have two other cars and I've got a, 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 a plethora of cars that I can go and play with on a regular basis. So I know that I'm in sort of a unique position there where for me, having sort of like an economical daily like an SI is a very doable thing and it doesn't like rob me of, of anything in my daily life. I don't have to worry about like, oh, I only have this SI to go to Cars and Coffee or like, you know, maybe you want to be part of that German car community. If this is your only car, I understand that maybe 
there's a couple things going against it. Luxury features, there's not many. You get cloth seats, they're not heated. They're very supportive and lovely to drive in. I've spent many hours in them and that's fine. But maybe that's not the vibe. And power, 200 horsepower. Okay, so we're gonna cancel this. We're gonna go down two gears, 77 miles an hour. I'm gonna go wide open throttle. That's not fast, okay? It's just not. It's not a fast car. And if you need that speed or speed is part of what you want and this is the only thing you're driving and it's like the only thing in your garage, I can see why you're gonna want a three or 400 horsepower vehicle because this is not going to hit you that way. But if you're somebody who just like really enjoys a good driving experience, you enjoy a rigid chassis, you enjoy chucking in a car, you enjoy feeling that locking helical differential, doing all its things, like that's fun stuff. If you enjoy a good, a, a really good manual six-speed transmission and you cannot afford to buy the Porsche, this actually kind of does that. So I think for me, this is the correct choice. Do I wish I waited? And this is a question everyone's been asking me. Do I wish I waited for the GR Corolla? Do I wish I waited for the Honda Civic Type R? No, no I don't. Because in the time it's gonna take for me to get my hands on one of those cars, for those cars to even hit the streets, my M3 would have cost me so much money in fuel, in consumables, in maintenance, unexpected downtime, and I would have been talking about it all the time. My friends would have not been my friends anymore because even Eddie, my buddy Eddie, who you hear on the podcast a lot, he's told me a million times, you're a happier person with this Honda. All we ever talked about when you had that M3 was how much of a pain in the butt it was. And now I've got this Honda and we're just not having that conversation anymore. And I'm like smiling because now I'm just driving my car, having a good time. So this to me is the perfect sort of like stripper, practical, but fun daily driver. It's economical, it's entertaining. can wind it out kind of anywhere you want without getting in much trouble. Thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Don't forget to respect the drive, and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> A little bit of torque steer.